All right. So to do a problem like this, um, and what we've previously discussed, ladies and gentlemen, is finding problems, right? What we previously did was using inverse operations, right? You took your trigonometric function and you just undid what was happening to it, and then you're fine. Well, again, when you have a problem that you're kind of like, I don't really know what to do yet, it's very helpful, I think, a lot of times just to write it without the trig functions. So let's just write that as x to the fourth minus 4x squared equals 0. So if I asked you guys to solve this right, in your Algebra 2 class, what would you have to do? Does anyone remember? Yeah, you'd have to look in the factoring, right? You can't just say x by itself and you know, do anything else. You have to apply factoring, right? So if you're going to do a factoring problem like this, what you would do is you would factor out an x squared, and you'd be left with x squared minus 4 equals 0. Then, once you have a product equal to 0, that's why we love doing factoring, because once you have a product equal to 0, you can apply the 0 product property, which states x squared equals 0 and x squared minus 4 equals 0. Therefore, you could say x equals you know, 0, and then here x um, equals plus or minus uh, 2, right? as you solve for each one. So that's how we do it with algebra. Now we're just throwing in a little trick. So when we look up here, all right, what do you guys think we're going to want to factor out? Cosecant squared, right? So you factor out cosecant squared of x, and you're going to be left with cosecant squared of x minus um, 4 of, yeah, minus 4 equals 0. Now we have a product equal to 0. So we say cosecant squared of x equals 0, and cosecant squared of x minus 4 equals 0. Well, this just equals cosecant of x equals 0, right, as you solve. And then here we add 4. Cosecant squared of x equals positive 4. Take the square root, and you can say cosecant of x equals plus or minus 2. But remember, rather than dealing with the cosecant, we don't want to deal with the cosecant when we're trying to find the values, right? We want to deal with the sine. So if cosecant of x is plus or minus 2, that means the sine of x equals plus or minus 1 half, right? What? Where did I lose you? Do you understand how I factored it? Did you understand it? Did you see how I factored this? Yeah. Okay. So all we're doing is we're simply factoring that out. Then you apply your zero product property to both terms. And now we're going to go and set to solve. Now the same thing, rather than looking at cosecant of x equals 0, let's take a look at when sine of x equals 0. So now I have all these values that sine equals. I need to find the theta that's going to make them true. So. I create my unit circle, and I say, when is sine equal to 0? Well, at this point, we have a point 1 comma 0. That's where sine's equal to 0. Um, and then when is sine of x, what angle, when I take the sine of it, is going to equal plus or minus 1 half? Well, at this angle, I have square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. At this angle. I have negative square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. Here, I have negative square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half. And at this angle, I have square root of 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half. So I have all these different points that my sine value is either at 0 or at plus or minus 1 half. So now what I simply need to do is just list all of those values. So therefore, I can say x is going to equal the angle 0, pi over 6, which would be this angle, 5 pi over 6, which is this angle, 7 pi over 6, which is this angle, and then 11 pi over 6, which is that angle. So therefore, there's multiple solutions that make this equation true. Yes? It could, actually. I'm sorry, I missed that. 
Um, yeah, was, yes. At uh, pi would also be a solution as well. Thank you. Because that's going to be your point at negative 1 comma 0, right? And as long as it falls within our constraint of 0 and pi, we're fine. Yes? Uh, but didn't you say that sine was uh, the, uh, like, when it, like, when you did cos, you can't sine. Wouldn't that be 1 over 0, not 0? Um, yeah, no. Oh, I Um, well, let's see here. So you have cosecant, cosecant of x equals good point. Yes, yeah, so that'd be zero over your radius, um, or one over zero over one. So yeah, actually, it would be undefined. Um, it'd be undefined at zero. So therefore, sine of x would be 1 over 0, which would be undefined. So yeah, actually, good point. I didn't even think I missed that. Thank you. I, well, as I said, I didn't go through this problem before. So yes, that actually would be undefined. So therefore, that actually, these would not be your values. Good point. Thank you. Good job, Nico. Good investigating. Yes, does everybody see what Nico did? My apologies. I missed that. 